Stand now for our Global Ideas series. 100 different species disappear worldwide every day. We meet people who want to protect our flora and fauna. This week, we're in Thailand. Environmentalists are working hard to reforest mangrove areas, home to vast numbers of animals. Our reporter, Bastian Hartig, was out and about in the Krabi province in southern Thailand with a woman who has made the protection of mangroves her life's work. Thousands of mangrove trees, a whole forest. On the coast of Krabi province in southwestern Thailand, nature has come back into its own. Fish, crabs and other marine animals live in the water around the dense roots. And these macaques obviously feel great in the forest as well. The small island of Koh Klang is just a few kilometers away, but there's not a trace of dense greenery here. The habitat is largely destroyed. The mangroves had to make way for ponds like this. Decades ago, they were set up all over the island to raise shrimp. Back then, that was profitable. Nowadays, Thailand's shrimp business is firmly in the hands of large farms on the mainland. So many of the ponds on the islands lie idle. And that's just where conservationist Jarwan Enright sees an opportunity. She wants to transform the ponds bit by bit back into mangrove forests. The ground has to be neither too moist nor too dry, so sometimes a little help is needed. In some area might have the standing water, so that's why we don't want to have the water standing all the time, even it's low tide. So we like to drain all the waters out, you know, because the mangrove, they don't like to, um, to grow in where it's too wet. For four years, Enright has been tirelessly on the road on behalf of the NGO Mangrove Action Project. The thought of turning ponds into mangrove areas is foreign to many of their owners. They're hesitant. For this case, he's already uh, raised a fish, so he thinks he will wait and see if uh, Raising fish is not uh, good for him, and, and um, maybe he will reconsider again. A lot of persuasion is necessary and plenty of patience. Enright's work can sometimes be quite a struggle. That makes the achievements all the more important. Sane Klongrua is the imam on the mainly Muslim island and has been catching crabs for years. Two years ago, he made one of his ponds available to Enright's project. The crabs he's especially interested in live in mangrove areas. They're considered a delicacy, and they sell well. I don't catch a lot because I want to preserve the animals. Only sometimes when I need money, for instance, to buy tea or coffee or other things. If it's not necessary, I don't catch any. Since the ecological restoration, the first trees are sprouting again. It will take years until dense mangroves stand here. But at least it's a beginning. Enright regularly stops by to see if everything's going well. But what she sees this time doesn't please her at all. I think the goats eat the, the leaves, eat the top of the new, um, new leaves coming up from the, the seed. And in fact, a bit later, she catches the culprits in the act. Free roaming goats have got through a hole in the fence that was built to keep them out. Even one seedling coming in, and I'm so happy to see something new growing in the site, but when we see like eaten by the goats and so, yeah, it's heartbreaking. <laughs> That's why on Koh Klang, environmental protection sometimes looks like this. 
the imam has some barbed wire and a load of concrete posts delivered. The mended fence should keep the goats out of the mangrove seedlings in the future. Only then will the mangroves in Sane Klongrua's pond continue growing. Enright hopes the pond can become a role model and motivate the other islanders to do what the imam has done. If it were up to the conservationists, all of Koh Klang could someday look the way it does here on one of its coasts and the bordering mainland. Nowadays, there are once again dense forests here. Until a few decades ago, the locals harvested wood from the area. Then, many places were deforested. But now the mangroves have regrown, and many people are benefiting from them, especially recreational fishermen. When there was no forest here, the fish disappeared. Now, there are more fish and crabs again. They've returned, and people catch more of them. I used to catch fewer than three fish a day. Now I catch a lot more, and they sometimes weigh up to 10 kilos. It's a lot better. Intact mangrove areas have become an important economic factor for some residents of the province. At the pier in Krabi Town, Kriang Kai Klongrua offers tours of the mangrove forests. That's how he earns most of his income. When we take tourists, they want to see animals in the mangrove forests. No mangroves, no animals. Tourists want to see lizards and mud crabs. All of them live in the mangroves. Sometimes we also see snakes. That impresses the tourists, and they ask to see them. Back at the imam's pond, the days catch. Eleven large crabs. I'm very satisfied. Since we converted the pond, it's become a good source of food. We catch crabs and fish as well. At home, his family is already waiting eagerly for the tasty treats. Enright has been invited to dinner today. My aim to work, maybe not only the nature, not only having tree, but also make people to see the benefits. So partly of my success um, make me feel good. That means good nature, restore it back, and people make me happy. So when I see this, this is a part of my, my, my success. She hopes that when word gets around, many other islanders will give her project a chance.